Hey guys, Velocial here with a full guide on how to get the secret mount, the hive mind. Now, the secret finding discord has finally figured out how to do all the puzzles, so yeah, Wowhead made a guide and that's what I've been following. So, first some advice before we start. There are four main puzzles that need to be solved, and then there's a puzzle at the end that require a group of five people. So, since the first four puzzles each reward the player with one of four monocles, if you start with five people, you can get each player to do their own puzzle, and then the player who just waits, because at the end, you really only need one per player. And I, however, did all of the puzzles because I did not know this, so I will, rec um, I will cover all of the monocle puzzles in this video, don't worry. So no matter if you decide to do all four puzzles or not, you must travel to Shatrav, where you will buy the Talisman of True Treasure Finding from the NPC Grifta. This is the absolute most important step, as the rest of the puzzles are locked unless you wear this necklace. So, this is where the journey parts in four uh, different directions. The blue puzzle starts in Shatrav, so don't leave just yet. The, the green one starts in Spires of Arak, the yellow one starts in Uldum, and the red one starts in Mashir. You can skip ahead to find the color you want to do now. So, starting with the blue monocle puzzle, some quick starting advice. You must have a flying mount. Speed increase potions are really useful, however not necessary. The add-on add called Tum Tum is really useful for the coordinates as well. And yeah, the speed potions I only recommend if you are in a slow class. So let's say I'm a warlock. It's really useful, alright? So the first, the very first step is to equip the necklace you just bought from Grifta. And then right behind Grifta, a letter appears. And then you make sure you click that. And after that you head towards High Mountain where you will find the next letter. And in High Mountain you find the letter at the coordinates of 57 the point... Or, comma 27 inside a tent. Once you are there you make sure you click that letter and then head towards the old Karazhan. This letter is the one that took the longest as you need to journey through Karazhan and to do the chest, uh, chest boss battle. Just a heads up, the AI are much better at the chess game than you so don't, don't like try to control the king or the priest, they will actually win it for you. Um, after that, uh, after bypassing the chess game and all of that, you turn right and walk up the stairs. There you will find a room before heading to the final boss. And in that room there's a chair with the third letter on it. So make sure you read it by clicking it. And then you head towards the next one which is in Thousand Needles. And here you will have to enter the dungeon called Race of Downs. Uh, Downs. And then you will run towards the uh, area of the last boss, where the next letter will be located. Once again, it's very important you make sure you click it, because you would not be able to see the next one otherwise. And then you head to, to Mount Hygel at the coordinates of 44.3, uh, 47.3. In a small room near bookshelf, the letter is hidden, and once clicked you must head to Ice Crown, at the coordinates of 70.7,73.3. Here the note is quite difficult to notice, as it's uh, on the top of a small spike. Uh, you click it, and then you head towards Town Long Steps at 37.7,63. Click that letter, and then you head towards Goldara in Barine Tundra, where you find a chest that contains the blue monocle. This chest is located at the very top of the structure and will reward you with the first of the four monocles. Alright, the green monocle, the absolute easiest of them all. Some quick starting advice, well, speed increase potions may be useful, it is not really necessary. Anyways, first things first, you must enter the dungeon Skyreach in Spires of Arak. In the instance, you need to clear your way to want the final boss, however you don't really have to kill the final boss, you just have to make sure you have your necklace equipped, and then once you do that, an uh, altar will be visible. Clicking the stone in the middle activates a puzzle, 
And this would be a tough one to figure out had it not been for the amazing people at the Secret Finding Discord. Thanks to them, we know the order, thus making this puzzle the easiest of them all. All you have to do is follow the order, which is right, up, down, up, right, right, up, left, down, up, left, down. After clicking in that specific order, the chest containing the green monocle will appear. If you happen to misclick, you just press the middle stone again and it will reset the puzzle. Alright, the yellow monocle, or should I say the most annoying monocle of them all. Anyways, some quick starting advice once again. Speed increase potion can come in handy, but they're not really necessary. I strongly advise, however, to download the add-on called Hive Mind HOO Puzzle Helper, as this is probably the trickiest puzzle of them all. So starting off, you must enter the dungeon Halls of Origination, located in Uldum. After slaying the first boss, you should enter the Illerator room. Make sure your necklace is equipped and then you should be able to interact with a stellar beam beneath the, uh, the floor. Clicking it will activate a puzzle below the floor. And in order to get there, you, um, an accessible room to the north of the elevator is now open. Now, let's talk the puzzle, alright? As you may happen to notice, there are quite a few colors, red, yellow, blue and green and you have to cover the entire floor with one of the colors. In my case it was the blue color, but I don't guarantee that's always the case. Um, then you might also notice these refractors. Uh, they come in a cross form, an X form and a circle form. Uh, they are all free clickable and their, their form determine where it changes the colors of the lights. So the cross refractor changes the colors in the light in the north east, west and south direction of the refractor and the, uh, the cross, oh, sorry, the X refractor or whatever it is uh, changes the light in the northwest, northeast, southeast and southwest direction of the refractor and then there is the circle refractor that changes all the lights around the refractor yeah, so the X and the cross refractors stop changing lights once the beam hits another refractor or a wall. This is where I strongly recommend the add-on, as it uh, only requires you to mark all of the goddamn lights and refractors on the entire floor, which might take a while, but after that you just press the go button and it will tell you exactly which refractors to click and how many times you must click it. Mine didn't show me all of those I had to click, however, but it helped me so much that it was basically child's play to figure out the rest on my own. Overall, I think I spent a good one and a half hour on this puzzle. Once you finally get the puzzle solved, the lights disappear and the chest with the yellow monocle appears in the middle of the room. Beware though, as clicking a refractor may reset the puzzle. So yeah, just make sure you click only the chest at that point. Alright, the red monocle, the absolute most tedious and stressing of them all. Some quick starting advice before this red monocle puzzle. Definitely have a seahorse mount, as it is really useful in Vashir, and also a flying mount. Also, have at least 3000 gold on your character, as you have to buy some stuff. And again, the add-on Tum Tum is really, really, really good at this point and it really e makes your life a lot easier and most importantly you should have about 45 minutes uh, 45 uninterrupted minutes in front of the computer as the duration of the items you buy are limited so as as mentioned this puzzle starts in Vashir, obviously the best zone of them all and it involves a lot of traveling time a lot of it so this puzzle is all about being quick, since, as mentioned, the items have a various uh, duration. The rare quality items have an hour duration, the uncommon quality items have a duration of 30 minutes, and the common quality items have a duration of 5 minutes. So, since there's a lot of coordinates, I will post them all in the description, and in order, uh, the exact order you must go in. Um, if you want it explained in a bit more detailed way, I will also link the Wowhead page in the description. It lists all the items and how many of each you should buy, as well as all the coordinates. I won't be covering the entire thing in 
as much detail, but I will describe the entire journey and show you on this map where you need to go. So the first step is you have to fly to Sir Finley Merkleton. He sells a few items, most notably the Red Monocle. But the three different items you need to obtain require your various items first. You need to obtain the Murloc skin, the Gastropod Gloop and the Captured Bubbles to buy the Monocle. In order to make it in time, you must start with the Murloc skin, as this is the only item that has a, an hour long duration. To get this, you simply start by buying 500 seashells from Sir Finley. You can, um, you can only buy 250 at a time, so yeah, just be beware of that, I guess. And these shells have a 30 minute duration, so you have plenty of time to reach your first spot. And after that, you will have to travel to you will have to travel to Volatile Violet Scale, and there you exchange your shells for a hundred shark teeth of some sort. And then after that, you will have to you will have five minutes to travel to to Manta Stargazer and buy 250 well-fed doctor fish. After which you will then travel to Lil Whaley and buy ten freshly molted crab skin. After that, you will have to travel to Old Fish Breath and buy 50 Glitter Gill Glitter, which has a 30 minute duration, as this is one of the items you need to buy the Murloc skin. Now you return to Sir Finley and buy another 80 seashells. From there, you travel to Gloomy Bluefin and buy two giant, giant toenail clippings. And now you have another 5 minutes to head to Little Carp and buy four Makura Eyes. Then you travel back to Volatile Violet Scale and buy one accidentally severed uh, seahorse fin. After that, you travel to Crimson Angerfish and buy three shiny, shiny sea serpent scale. Then you travel back to Mantis Stargaze and buy 40 symbiotic plankton. After obtaining both the plankton and the glitter, uh, you head back to Sir Finley and buy the five uh, scintillating murloc skin lotion. Which, this item lasts for an hour and gives you plenty of time to get the last two items needed for the Monocle. With no time to waste, uh, waste however, you should then start working towards the next item, which is the Gastropod Gloop. Start by buying 300 seashells again from Sir Fenley and then head towards Old Fish Breath to buy 30 Vance's Black Squid Ink. Then travel to Blackfish and buy 30 Super Slick Eel Slime. After that, head over to the Volatile Violet Scale and buy free Rock Encrusted Welk Shells. Once again, after that, you travel to Little Carp and buy 5 Potent Gastropod Gloop. And then you must head back to Sir Finley and start working towards the last item needed. Once again at Finley, waste no time and start buying 1500 seashells. Then head towards Little Whaley and buy 300 Very Pretty Corals. After that, Head once more to Old Fish Breath and buy 100 uh, Riddescent Shimmery Skin. Oh, Shimmery Skin. Then head to Crimson Angerfish and buy 20 Luxurious Lux Scale Scale. Then head to Blackfish and buy the 5 Cavitation Bubbles. Once you have all the free items, you can finally head back to Sir Finley for the last time and buy the Red Monocle. Then resist the urge to jump into the ocean and kill every Murloc in sight. Alright. After having at least one person in a group obtain each of the monocles, the most amazing teamwork journey begins. Also, make sure you keep your necklaces on at all times throughout this, as it is really necessary in order to actually do the puzzles. At this point in the journey, you have to head to Soramar. One player, the one who didn't do any puzzles, or, well, just any of you really, so long as you have all the monocles spread around you, uh, will have to stand at a blocked off bookshelf. This bookshelf is blocked by four beams uh, in each color corresponding to the monocles and it is located at 41.0,69.5 and each other player in the group must then head to a different mob and if you, let's say if you did the blue puzzle you head towards uh, the mob called the Blum Anne at 46.8 uh, comma 28.6. If you then did the green puzzle, you head towards Gilsui or <laughs> at 19.9, comma 46.3. If you did the yellow puzzle, you head towards Eurillion at 43.5, comma 81.8.
And if you did the red puzzle, you had towards Rikay at 71.8,62.5. Note that you must equip the monocle in order for the mobs to appear as hostile. So you have to equip the corresponding monocle to the mob you are located at. The player who is then standing at a blocked off bookshelf can only enter once each other party member have brought the designated mob below 20% health at the same time. Again, requires great teamwork. Once that happens, the player can enter the room, and hidden behind some pillows you find a small cat toy. Now this step is very important, if you are the one who is in that room and clicking the cat toy, you must note how much damage you take from clicking it, as these numbers are really really necessary for the next puzzle. Once you have done so, and made sure you noted the number of damage you took, the party must travel to Court of Stars. The, the dungeon in Suramar. In there you will find a house with five different cats. Each cat needs to be petted the same amount of times um, the digit uh, showed. The first di uh, digit is uh, how many times Mrs. Fluffy Muffins uh, must be petted. The second digit is the amount of times Shadow must be petted. The third digit is how many times Mew has to be petted. The fourth is how many times Ash has to be petted, and the fifth digit is how many times Bella has to be petted. So in our case, I was the one who took eight, uh, 84,205 damage, which means that Fluffy must be petted eight times, Shadow four times, Mew two times, Ash four times, and Bella five times. Also, all of the cats must have the correct amount of stacks at the same time, and then a clickable portal appear. So it is really important again that you work together and do a countdown or whatever it takes for you to actually pet at the same time. Then the party uh, will be teleported to an instance with the last two challenges before you get the mount. The first challenge is a jumping challenge. It requires each member to jump at a correct order. The order is too long for me to include in this video though, so I will just link it in the description instead, as well as show you how we did it. As you may notice, we have been assigned a number. I was the number 5. And then whenever our leader said a number, followed by either the letter F, B, L or R, the person would then jump forward, backwards, left or right. So if he for example said 5 FFR, I would have to jump forward twice and jump to the right twice. After doing that thing, your group is then presented with the very last puzzle. Thank god, this took forever. This puzzle is a bit tricky, partly because the disc you have to travel on is sort of weird to click, but also because uh, of a few factors. Factor 1. One player in the group is the rider. This person can ride with anyone in the group. Factor 2. There must be at least two people on the disc to reach the other side. Factor 3. Two people in the group can only travel with the rider. And factor 4. You have to figure out yourself who is who. So, what we did, we, we just started, I, I, we started by testing if I was the rider. By pairing me with one other player at a time. So we put me and another player. And that worked. But that doesn't really mean that I'm the rider. It could have been him, it could have been me, so when we tried with another player, still me on it, that worked as well, and then we were led to believe that I was the rider, which I was. After that, we started testing with three people at a time, to like find out who couldn't ride with us, 
uh, when it didn't work, we changed one player. And if that didn't work either, we would try uh, with the last person. And if that failed too, we knew the player besides the rider was one of those who could only write on his own with the rider. When we first uh, figured out which two people could write together, it was really easy. Well, apart from clicking with disk, apparently. That was difficult for some people. <laughs> um, but we just followed this lovely visual from the Wowhead page. Um, and we started by moving three people to the other side. Um, then we would drop uh, one of the pe people on the other side. And then write back and pick up one of the only one of those who could only travel with the rider and the rider, then travel to the other side, drop that person off, pick up the previous dropped off person, travel back, bring back the third person, so we were free again, ride back, drop off the same person again, then ride back to pick up the other person who could only travel on his own with the rider, f travel back, drop him off, pick up the other guy, travel back, pick up the last guy, so we were the last the last three people to drop off. Well, that took uh, a bit of coordination, but I really, really enjoyed it. So, at the very end, you are presented with a room, and you all stand in your own circle, and you click on the brain in front of you, after which all players in the group will be rewarded with the mount, the hive mind. This was probably my favorite of all the secret finds so far, the teamwork aspect of it was simply amazingly fun. I want to say massive thanks, however, to Wowhead, the Secret Finding Discord, and the creator of the Yellow Monocle add-on, all of which really helped me to make this video as quick as possible. I also really want to thank my group, who were all just amazing and tackled the puzzles with great positivity. Thank you for all of your help, guys. If this video, however, helped you to get your hive mount, <laughs> hive mind, I would really appreciate if you would drop a like, as this video took me forever to make. Well, anyways, that's it for now. If you like the secret mount finding guide, I have another one for Lucid Nightmare. Anyways, I will see you guys in my next video. Goodbye.